Hello, this is Rick Hanslick, Applications Engineer with Alpha Technologies, and I am happy to be back to finish our discussion about measuring viscoelastic properties with an RPA. Two of the most common ways to measure viscoelastic properties are the creep and the stress relaxation experiment. First off, we have the creep experiment. The creep experiment measures the change in strain over time after applying a given stress on the specimen. Creep is generally divided into three stages. The primary creep starts at a rapid rate and slows with time. The secondary creep follows a relatively uniform rate, and the tertiary creep has an accelerated creep rate which goes to zero when the material reaches fa failure. Typically, the Voigt model, which is a spring and dash pot in parallel, is a good model for predicting and calculating creep behavior. Stress relaxation measures the change in stress over time after applying a given strain. Similarly, the Maxwell model, which is represented by a spring and dash pot in series, is good for predicting stress relaxation behavior. Viscoelastic properties are equally important in rubber polymers and uncured compounds. Viscoelastic properties can predict the processability of these materials. In uncured materials, the viscoelastic properties are related to the processing properties such as dye swell, mold flow, smoothness of extrusion, and most commonly used mixing behavior. In addition, we want to know the viscoelastic properties of cured materials in order to predict final product properties. The best way to measure viscoelastic properties in uncured and cured rubber compounds is to test the material with an applied sinusoidal deformation. The lineup of RPAs offered by Alpha Technology are capable of doing just this, ranging from the original RPA 2000 all the way to the Premier RPA Plus, which uses a dynamic shape factor to provide the most accurate modulus measurement in the industry. The RPA functions by applying a given strain at a given frequency to an enclosed sample and then measuring the torque response of the material. The dash curve above displays the torque response. This is the property the instrument directly measures and records. As shown, this complex torque is out of phase with the applied strain. A Fourier transform is applied to the complex torque curve and used to separate the complex torque, otherwise referred to as S star, into two additional curves. The first is an in-phase torque signal S prime. The second, a 90 degree out of phase signal S double prime. S prime is the elastic response of the material or the solid response, while S double prime is the viscous or liquid response of the material. Delta shown near the bottom is the phase shift between the measured complex torque S star and the applied strain. This curve is the most straightforward way to separate the viscous loss component from the solid or elastic component. From these measurements, it is then possible to directly calculate shear modulus represented by G which is a significant scientific property of materials. The torque signal can be shown by the following vector, where the elastic torque and the viscous torque are 90 degrees out of phase. This is the angular difference, or lag, between stress and the sinusoidal applied strain. S prime, or G prime, is the elastic or storage component of the material. This determines the amount of energy stored in the material. This vector is in phase with the strain position. S double prime, or G double prime, is the viscous or loss torque. It determines the amount of energy lost during a cycle. S star, or G star, is the complex torque or complex modulus, which as mentioned prior, is the measured torque at the transducer of the RPA, which is the total resistance of the sample to deformation. From this vector, it is also po possible to calculate tan delta. Tan delta is the ratio of the viscous component to the elastic component, shown near the top of the page as S double prime over S prime, and can provide valuable information about both cured and uncured properties of material. It is also possible to calculate this value in terms of modulus. This is to say G double prime over G prime. A cured compound with a very low tan delta will be very resilient, have high rebound, and low hysteresis. Hysteresis relates to energy dissipation, which can be described as the energy loss during the deformation cycle. 
In this case, that lost energy translates to heat buildup. The example above shows the effect of tan delta on a cured material. Cured material A has a relatively low tan delta value of 0.05 and therefore behaves more elastically, i.e. like a solid. This is, an intuit this is intuitive based on the above equation as the S prime or the elastic torque response will be the governing variable. Cured material B has a significantly higher tan delta, meaning the viscous response of this material will have a greater influence in comparison to material A, thus resulting in less rebound as more of the energy will be lost. In uncured materials, tan delta is a good predictor of downstream processability. In uncured mixed rubber stocks as well as raw elastomers, Intuitively, materials with high tan deltas will be more difficult to process as much of the applied energy will be lost to heat buildup. Applying the knowledge of viscoelastic modeling, it is possible to directly calculate a number of material properties based on the torque signal measured by the RPA. This includes properties of both uncured and cured material, many of which are listed above. For example, a high G prime or a high elastic modulus in a cured material will relate to a high durometer and stiffness in the final product. A high G double prime will relate to a large heat buildup when the final product is flexing. It is important to understand these viscoelastic models and calculations to then be able to understand your material and inherently your final product. Thank you all for listening to my webinar on measuring viscoelastic properties with an RPA.